Yes, my peoples, it's T. And today I am doing another football tier list. So today's one is all about my beloved club, Manchester United. And it's about the current squad as well. So first team squad. So let's see what my opinions and thoughts are on the current squad. So yeah, we're going to break it down. We're going to break it down into world-class players, solid players, average squad players, loan, potential, and also trash sell. So yes, let's get to it. Let's get it. <laughs> All right. So um, first one, first one, first one, Tom Heaton. <laughs> Tom Heaton. So Tom Heaton is a product of the Man United Academy. Um, he left for many, many years, um, never really played for us, and came back at the beginning of, I believe, last season, maybe, um, in order to be a backup to David De Gea, essentially. Um, to be fair, not even a backup to David De Gea, a backup to the backup. So whatever whatever keeper we have as a backup, and that's been changing a lot recently, he's the backup to the backup. He doesn't even get a sniff. So I'm not sure why we brought him back, to be fair. I guess it's in case the worst happens. In case the hair gets injured and and the backup gets injured. So anyway, um, for me, Tom Heaton, um, I'm going to be honest. It, it's, yeah, it's getting, you know what? It's getting sold. It's, it's just getting sold. It's getting sold for me. Like, In fact, we can't even sell him. We can't even sell him. Let's make him, he's a squad player. He's not average, but he's a squad player. He's somebody who's there just for vibes. He's getting paid just to be on holiday in Manchester, essentially. Um... Brandon Williams. Now, this guy, I haven't seen him all season. I know he has some injuries. Um, I believe he actually went out on loan somewhere. Did he? No? But, um, I should know this. But essentially, under Oli, he had a very good year. One year under Oli where he was like the main left back, <laughs> essentially. Um, I don't know how that happened, but he was actually okay as well. And everyone thinks of him as he's a young player, the youth player. I swear he's like 21, 22 now. Still young, but um, personally, I, I don't think he's ever going to make it at Man United. Um, he's not trash, but I don't think he's ever going to make it at Man United. So for me, Brandon Williams, sell. Axel Tunzebi is the next one in line. Now, for me, Axel Tunzebi, I'm not going to lie, he's a solid player. Like He's got speed. He's got strength. Like he could be, he could have been a like high quality defender for us. He could have been like boom, like great. But too injury prone. He has so much injuries. I swear he's like twenty four now as well, or something along those lines. It's just so much injuries. Um, again, another one who's just never gonna make it consistently in our team. Um, now it's too late. It's too late to loan him. I don't even see him on the bench. Or in the reserves, he's just always injured. So for me, he's not trash, but he needs to be sold because it's just not going to work out. Christian Eriksen signed at the beginning of this season. Um, now he's been, and I say signed, we signed him for free from Brentford. He's 30 years old. I think he's turning 31 this year and he's been a revelation. He's been quietly, quietly, he's been like the 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 the, the main architect in our, def in our, in our midfield. The transformation of our team um, has been in large parts to Chris and Eriksen. He's been injured now for about three, four months out of the team. And yes, we're still winning. But you can tell there's something missing. And even before he got injured, he was like our top assister. Like he got so much assist. Like he's even, I think he's still third in the assist list, the most assist in the league, despite being injured for, for three months. It shows how, how much impact he was having. Yeah, he was he was on fire. So for me, um is he world class? I think that might be a little bit of a push, but he's a solid, very good player. Like solid for me. Quality, quality, quality. Um Tyra Malassia or Malassia, how however you want to say. Um again, another one of Ten Hog signings. Brand new player, 22 year old left back who came in from the Dutch League. Everyone was like, oh, Dutch League again. He's gonna be basic. Um he was meant to go to Leon, um, we, we came in there and stole it, stole that signing, eight million pound or whatever, eight million euros. Either way, it was cheap. And I'm not gonna lie, he was a bargain because he is quality, quality player. He's got the pace, he's got the tenacity. He's, yo, listen, he, he, has, he has actually made Luke Shaw play better this season because he came in and he was on point. Luke Shaw was, at the start of the season, very shaky. And Luke Shaw, he even said himself, 
Luke Shaw saw that was like, oh, my days. I'm under competition. I need to step it up a little bit. Um, exactly when, exactly the same as when Alex Tellers first came in as well. Luke Shaw was having a bit of a wobble. Alex Tellers came in. Luke Shaw, boom, stepped it up. Stepped it up. So, yeah, man. Malassia for me, um, it's, too, it's too soon to say he's solid, very good. Um, but I don't think he's, I think he's just a bit above average. So I'm going to put him as a very good squad player. Very good squad player. Um, Diego Dallo. Oof. Now, this one is tough because at the start of the season, Dallo was number one by far. Wamasaka was non-existent for me. I thought, get rid of him. Trash. Trash last season. Trash the start of the season. But... And Dello was on fire. Like everything he had, he had the pace, had the strength. He had, he was getting back. He was getting forward. He was doing, he was doing everything. He was doing everything. He was doing everything. But in the last few weeks, since he got injured with Portugal, I believe in after that, he's not been the same player. Every time I see him play, I'm like, whoa, get the Saka back on the pitch. So, but I'm still gonna put him in solid, very good. For me, he's solid. He's a solid player. Solid player. Um, Aaron Wambasaka. Yes, listen. I know he was nearly gone. Everyone ripped him off. He was like, yeah, get rid of him. Let's get Dumfries. Let's get some ever cut quality right back. Let's replace this guy. But Wambasaka, he's coming. Yes, he's still a little bit limited in certain areas, but he's coming. And Ten Hag has worked his magic on, on Wambasaka because he's been playing solid. So for me, solid. Um, Casemiro, not Casemiro, Casemiro. Uh, listen, I don't mean to say much about him. Listen. Instantly, world class, absolute world class. Five Champions League for a reason. World class talent, midfield maestro. He's got that CDM position locked up, and not only that, because at, at Real Madrid he had Tony Cruz and Modric, and everyone thought he was just a destroy. Everyone thought he was just a attacker, defender, whatever. Yo, he comes to Man United. He's showing people that I'm not just a, a CDM. I don't just tackle. I'm not just good at tackling and getting the ball and winning the ball back and being in the right place at the right been in the right place at the right time. I'm also good at passing. Like, so many times he's been the assister of the assister or the assister himself. Like, his passing is first time. Like, compare that, compare that to last season, Scott McTominay, even this season. Scott McTominay gets the ball, holds it, bounces around for ages, holds it, ages, and then passes it, and then, and then he passes it backwards. Classimiro gets the ball. Before he even gets the ball, he's looking around, gets the ball, boom, first time pass, gone, first time, out to a forward instantly. Gets the ball, turns pass straight away, first time, into space, into space with time, into a forward. Forward pass straight away. Great passes over the top, through the middle, through the channels, everything, got it all. So yeah, he's been a very, very big addition to our midfield. Like the midfield this year, different, different gravy. And for me, I didn't catch that. sorry, relax. And for me, yeah, Midfield is where games are, are basically won and lost. The engine room, the engine room, and Casemiro and, and Ericsson have been a big part of that. Hence why this season we've actually been transformed. Um, transformed. Okay, Scott Matamane. Um, woo, Scott Matamane. For me, I'm not going to lie. I'm torn. I'm torn. Um, I'm, I'm torn between Cell because he's just not that good. And he's probably our, the one player that we can get some money for um he's not that great he doesn't offer much but at the same time as at the moment because our squad is depleted like we don't have a lot of backup maybe it's good for him to be just a squad player someone to come in in the cup games um so i'm torn i feel like he could go like to newcastle for like for 30 million something like that but you know what scott McTominay, you're gonna get especially because because you're from the main united academy you was brought up here i'm gonna put you in squad your squad player, average. Put you there for now. You can come in under cup games. Um, now, Fred. Oh my God, this guy. One day he's, he's Brazilian and one day he's not. One day he can play midfield. One day he's like, I don't play football. <laughs> like he's Literally, he's such a contrast of players at times. He's never, he's not consistent. Literally, he's amazing one day and really rubbish crap the other day. I just don't understand. Like can't even pass or control the ball. Like, even I could do better. I don't understand what this guy is on. But it's mad that he is literally in the Brazilian midfield with Casemiro. Like, him and Casemiro is there. 
So I don't get it. I don't get it. For Man United, it's just inconsistent. So for me, um, Fred, as a squad player, he's good. He's a good squad player. He's good to bring in as a backup sometimes, but he can never start every game. Never. Never, never, never. So, yeah, let's do that. Um, okay. Donny van der Beek. Donny van der Beek. Oh, no, no, no. He's coming and he's had a tarry time. First of all, Ali Gunnar Solskjaer just didn't play him, even though we had Fred and Scott McTominay in the midfield. So that, that was just poor management from, from Ali because he's actually a better player than those than those players, in my opinion. Um, and after that, he got injured. Like, he came in... He came in, Ten Hag was his manager that actually, you know, you know that he knew from from Ajax. And he got injured before he had a chance to even get a chance. Even even when Casemiro was suspended and um, Ericsson got injured, you would think Johnny Van der Beek would have came into that position. But no, we had to get Sabitzer on loan because he was injured. So he, he's not had a chance. So for me, I, I, don't know, I don't know where to place him. I can't say he's trash because I haven't seen him play. But when I have seen him play, he's not been that good. But he's not really confident right now. So for me... I never average squad player. You see how average our team is looking so far. Very average. We're actually overperforming right now, being third in the league and winning a trophy and being in the final of everything. Um, so, yeah, it's it's yeah. Anyway, Martin De Brafka, he's went back, he went back to he went back to Newcastle already. So this is not an updated list. So he can I won't put him on our board. Bruno Fernandez. Oh, oh my days. This is so difficult. This is so difficult because I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be reckless. I'm gonna be reckless. I'm, I'm gonna put him in. I'm gonna put him in world class. Now let me let me let me justify that. Let me justify that. If I'm being honest, he's not quite world class yet. There should be a couple of levels of world class because he's actually really good and solid in my opinion. So I'm, ah, you know, I may bring him back down. I may bring him back. No, I'm bringing him down. No, I'm being honest. He's solid. He's very good. He's um, he's 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 a he's above. So I'm gonna order them individually afterwards. But he's actually. A, like very high to, to being world class because even though he gets a lot of stick and he does sometimes you know makes a lot of mis misplaced passes and stuff like that he actually has such a massive influence and impact on Man United it's unbelievable like the amount of assists he gets or the second assists or goals whatever he's like he's involved in almost every single goal we score he's, he's there. if you watch the highlights he's there at some point he makes a key pass or does something that makes us score a goal um, so he's been very influential, especially since Ronaldo has left. Um, he's back to his, his normal influential self. So Bruno Fernandes, very solid. Um, after I add them to the list, you know what, I'm going to do it as I'm going ad hoc. So for me, Bruno, you're going to be at the top of this list of being solid um, over Chris and Eriksen, I think. Um, is Dalo or Wamba Saka more solid? Oh, this is tough. Just based on based on current form, uh, Wamba Saka is a little more solid. I'm not gonna lie, a little more solid. Just based on current form, um, average squad player. Don't, I'm gonna I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna put Wamba. Oh, I'm gonna put Malasia up here. Um, Fred up here. I can't really place. I can't place um, Donny because I haven't seen him play. Malasia, Fred. Scott McTominay, Donny and Scott McTominay and then Tom Heaton. That's my ordering there. Um, yeah, cool. Let's do it live. Jaden Sancho. Now, it's a shame because I'm not gonna lie, he was bought for 75 million, almost 80 million pounds. Uh, he was a he was quality at Dortmund, like two, three good seasons just playing just on fire, like one of the best young talents in the world. Assists, goals, everything. Comes to Man United under Oligo and Solskjaer. He didn't play him at the start for some reason. Um, and then once he got into the team, he just, he just doesn't seem like he's ready for the Premier League. He doesn't seem like he's Premier League like ready. Like He needs a little more pace, a little more strength. Um, but he's still a quality player. He's, but I think once Ten Hag gets the team playing how he wants to play, because at, at Ajax and Ten Hag is a passing manager, he likes to pass and move. And um, he likes to, you know, he likes teams that have to be a p possession based teams. Um, we don't have the players to do that yet, so we're playing a bit of a, a hybrid where we're kind of a, a counter-attacking team with some possession. But we don't have every, not every player in our team right now is a ten hard player who can actually keep the ball and is comfortable on the ball. So once he has that, I think I think that's when Sancho will shine because Sancho is actually good at keeping keeping the ball, passing it, and little you know passing moves and one twos. That's what um, Sancho is good at. We don't have that yet. Like I think at City, at City, 
a team like City or Arsenal, Sancho would actually, you know, thrive there because the way how they play. And that's how Ten Hag plays, the passing possession type thing. But we can't do that yet because Ten Hag's only six months into his job and he doesn't have the players yet to do that. But he will eventually. So right now, Sancho for me, average, average squad player. Um, I'll, put, I'll put him above Fred though. Not above Malasia, but above Fred. That's my opinion um, in that order. Marcus Rashford. <laughs> Marcus Rashford. So, listen, this season...